mes cas sont où Le roi. The gritty criminal drama follows Abulola, Ifei, and Gift, three pals, as they make their way through the streets of Isale Eco, which are overrun with warring gangs with connections to powerful government figures. The public is thought to be willing to bow to the authority of the gangs because they rule the streets. Abulola was raised in Isale Eco and learned how to live there as a child. He was the late king of the streets, Ogunmola. Abalola was happy of the money he and his companions Gift and Ife were able to take out of the wealthy woman's bag that they had stolen. The local Alenian, Alay Baba Adekunal, was to receive a percentage of the robber's proceeds as per the law of robbery. He was in charge of neighborhood politics and was the owner of the people, but he had just lately made the decision to retire. A Kinwale, one of his goons, was to take his position, according to him. Baba was certain that a Kinwell shouldn't resign, despite his desire to do so. For a guy of the streets, a political career is the logical next step, and Baba urged a Kinwell to follow suit. A Kinwell was unable to object to the Alenian's choice. The woman who misplaced her handbag later sought assistance from Baba. She got out of her seat and demanded the immediate return of her bag as Abalola came in to pay his share to the Alenian. Abalola, however, was no typical youngster, he told Baba that the wife had called the police. The Alenian should be approached first for assistance, not the police, as per the unwritten laws of the street. Abalola's mental clarity really astonished a Kinwale, and the young man instantly understood that he was destined for greatness. When Abalola's mother saw her son hanging out with the gangsters, she was indignant. She was not prepared to lose her son in a gang conflict after her husband was fatally shot by his adversaries. Abalola, however, made the choice to stick with a Kinwale and his soldiers. Being a gangster gave him a sense of pride and respect. As he knocked on a Kinwale's door, the latter quickly took Abalola under his wing. A Kinwale alias Ninalowo adopted Abalola and carried him wherever he went. Abalola first got to know Lagos's political patriarch Oloragun. Working for him and looking after those who didn't back him were Nino and Kazim. Despite being a criminal, Nino had a good heart. He had a heart for the common people and did everything in his power to help them. Abalola admired his father, and Nino was the one who instilled in him the value of education. Abalola should seek a career instead of becoming a thug like him, according to Nino. Yet shortly after Nino was killed in the street, Abalola's goal was crushed. Nino and a mobster named London got into a fight. He had a reputation for smuggling individuals, and Nino had asked him to release one of the girls he had unjustly held captive. He was killed the following day in broad daylight. Almost 100 individuals killed in a gang war that started after Nino's death. A monarch is never buried alone in Yoruba country, and the fact that Nino's death resulted in a huge carnage proved that he was a great king. Once his father passed away, Abalola began working for Kazim. He frequently felt bad about extorting unlawful taxes from helpless store owners, but he had no other choice. Abalola's schooling was unimportant to Kazim, all he wanted was to use him and his pals as a means of generating more income. While Abalola worked for Kazim and his boss Aloragun, a new candidate named Bamadil Alanrawaju was running for governor of Lagos State. She was taking on the PND party, which has ruled Lagos since 1999. Kazim was terrified by her outspoken criticism of the party's involvement in corruption. Kazim vowed that it would become increasingly bloody over time as the elections drew near. Tani, 
Kazim's daughter, had just returned from the United States when Abulola was requested to look out for her. In order to depart Lagos after the election, Abulola saved money. He desired some calm now because he was tired of leading a violent life. Tani had been Abulola's childhood sweetheart, and he was utterly enamored of her when he finally met her after a 15-year absence. Tani was taken to the apartment Kazim had purchased for her, and he was astounded by how lovely it was. It also helped him understand how individuals like Kazim exploited the poor for financial gain. He purchased an apartment big enough to house 30 individuals in need. He had grown tired of Kazim and Tani's exploitation of others and their haughty attitude toward their wealth. Later, after understanding how callous she had been all along, Tani apologized. While Kazim was making love to Tani, Panama, Ifei, his best buddy, was in danger. When Kazim entered a barber shop and killed Tijudin, also known as London, for supporting Bamadil Olanrawaju, Panama had been with him. Later, because he could tie them to the murder, Kazim urged Panama to kill the barber. Abalola had agreed to accompany Panama to the barber's house in order to persuade him to leave Lagos, but he got sidetracked by Tani. The barber was ordered to leave right away when Panama entered the flat alone himself. He was killed by another man who entered the flat shortly after he had gone. A bunch of men ambushed Panama as he was strolling alone along the street, and they butchered him to death. Abalola was resolved to exact retribution when he learned about it. Abalola thought that Panama had been killed by Ekin, Kashopo base gun, Ekin's son, and their soldiers. In order to get revenge for Ekin's death, Abalola pursues Ekin's group. Abalola attacks Cash following a deadly battle that results in numerous fatalities, only to be hit in the head, knocked unconscious, and bound to a chair. When he awakens, Ekin welcomes him and urges him to calm down. Abalola, however, mocks him for betraying Ifei and killing him. Cash and Ekin denied killing Panama. Abalola had little regard for them because they joined London's group after Nino's passing. Then Ekin reminded Oba that the Alenian, Kazim, who had dispatched Panama to kill the barber, was responsible for London's death. Ekin talked about the matter with a Loragun after learning about the barber and requested that he approve Kazim's execution. In a meeting that a Loragun set up with Ekin and Kazim, Kazim claimed that he was not to blame for London's death because London had drawn the gun first, causing Panama to panic and shoot him. Kazim attributed everything to Panama, but Ekin had his doubts. Kazim gave Terrible the order to kill Panama, and his daughter would have been abducted if he hadn't succeeded. Oba was resolved to take Kazim's life once he realized that Kazim had given the order for Panama's execution. Since that his gang wanted Kazim out of the situation as well, Ekin offered Oba the backing of his group. Terrible was abducted by Oba and his men, who then forced him to reveal Kazim's whereabouts. Terrible was prepared to reveal all the information he had as he pleaded for his life, but Oba was not interested in granting the traitors any mercy. He discovered a Loragun had given Kazim the order to kill his father before killing Terrible. The Io masqueraders arrived that day to send London's ghost home, and Oba and his men joined the crowd and opened fire. Oba caught up with Kazim while he was attempting to escape through the terrace. Oba discovered during their altercation that Nino's murderer was Kazim rather than London. By killing Nino, he obtained all the authority and support that Nino possessed. Abalola was compared to his father by Kazim, who called him a stupid person who was only motivated by morality. Kazim engages in a fight, which he eventually wins, and afterward orders Abalola to greet his father on his behalf, he grabs his revolver. Gift bursts through the door, shoots Kazim numerous times, and he falls backward off the rooftop onto a car in the street below as Abalola closes his eyes, believing he is about to die. There, a distraught Tenny discovers her father dead on the ground. As she looks up, she notices Abalola and Gift staring down at her. Oba and his guys head out after the gang fight. A few people were arrested by the police on trivial offenses. The death of Kazim was welcomed by everyone because Oba knew that he and Aloragun had far too many foes. 
Opa came to terms with the fact that he needed to remain in Isail Eco to safeguard the people he loved at the conclusion of Gangs of Lagos. He will eventually follow in his father's footsteps and become a Lenian, the owner of men. The hostilities his fathers had launched would come to an end under his leadership. In order to create a successful future for the residents of Lagos, he promised Bamadil Olamrawaju his backing.